Hi, this is Perry Marshall, author of Ultimate Guide to Google AdWords and 8020 Sales and Marketing. And you're listening to The 360 Entrepreneur with Jan Ilunga. This is episode 218, and today is all about digital marketing, sales, and paid advertising. Here we go. Welcome to the 360 Entrepreneur Podcast, the show for entrepreneurs and small business owners who dream big and want to do bigger. Join some of the world's top entrepreneurs, internet marketers, and best-selling authors as they share their inspiring stories, their struggles, and give actionable tips that will help you build, grow, and promote your online business. Here's your host, Yanni Lunga. Hey, hey, welcome to the 360 Entrepreneur Podcast, the show for the modern online entrepreneur. And in today's episode, we focus on a couple of areas that are so critical, and I can't stress this enough. If you're a business owner, if you're an entrepreneur, and I'm talking about marketing and sales, and we do so with an incredible guest. Perry Marshall is a powerhouse when it comes to paid advertising, digital marketing, sales, and he's here with us to share his expertise on some of the things to think about and do so that you get more people toward your content, toward your, so that you get more prospects on your website. And not only that, but you also get those prospects to become paying clients. The show notes page for today's episode are over at yanilunga.com for slash episode 218. Are you ready? All right, let's get started. Here's the interview with Perry Marshall from perrymarshall.com. In today's episode, we are joined by a powerhouse in the digital marketing world. He's one of the world's most sought-after business consultants. He's a multi-bestselling author and the person behind two movements in modern marketing. His Google AdWords book laid the foundation for the 100 billion pay-per-click industry, which is mind-blowing. And his book, Ultimate Guide to Google AdWords, is the world's best-selling book on web advertising. In case you're wondering, yes, he's really here with us to share his advice and expertise. I'm so excited to welcome on the show, Perry Marshall. Perry, how's it going? It's good. It's good to be on Entrepreneur 360 and good to be talking to you today. And uh, yes, we're we're going to dive into those levers that really make uh, marketing a lot easier and more fun. So glad we could be here. Thank you. It's definitely an honor to have you here. Thank you for for your time. And I have to say, Perry, you've been quite the busy guy, huh? (laughs) I have. You know, um, this this last um, year, uh, lots of cool things. Um, I've been very excited about things that we've been doing. Uh, You know, we're working very hard and happy to be doing it. Um, So... Yeah, we're we're gonna have have to compress a a lot of conversation to a short conversation today. Yeah, exactly. I was thinking as I was preparing for this interview, I was like, yeah, I think that Perry is one of the people who you could easily have on for several episodes because you cover so many different topics. I mean, I mentioned a couple of your books. I know you have a book also, for example, on Facebook advertising. There is the 8020 sales and marketing. So there would be so many different topics that we could cover. I think the first question that I should ask you, I know it's something you talk about, and I think it's something everybody really who's here with with you and I, Perry, is interested in is what should we think about and do to have prospects choose our own online platform, so our own website, so that they buy from us rather than the competition? Well, it it really starts with this thing that is deceptively simple, um, which is the unique selling proposition. And, Mm -hmm. you know, one of the problems with funny most of the things i talk about is most people think they understand them and they really don't um Mm -hmm. most people think they understand google adwords and they don't most people think they understand 80 20 and they absolutely do not (laughs) Uh, most people think they understand unique selling propositions they don't uh most people think that a unique selling proposition is oh yeah fresh hot pizza delivered in 30 minutes or less uh, or less guaranteed 
oh yeah, that's Domino's Pizza, that's a USP. Well, you realize that um, in 2017, that's not a USP, right? <laughs> At all, right? Like, well, there's probably 25 pizza restaurants within five miles of my house. And they all can deliver a pizza, and maybe half of them can get it here in 30 minutes. Hmm. And like that isn't a USP. People think that a unique selling proposition is this like little slogan or elevator speech. And what it really is, it's an answer to the question, what can you do for me that nobody else can? Um, and it's not just like saying what you do, but actually doing it. What do you actually do for them that nobody else can? And I find with literally 90% of people, um, when I, when I really start chiseling away and saying, okay, well, so what do you do that nobody else does? A lot of people like there isn't anything, or if there is, it's buried and they're not talking about it. I have mm-hmm. to dig for that story. So like there's all kinds of web designers where, oh, you know, I can I can design you a great website. Well, man, there's there's like people in the Philippines that can do that for six dollars an hour. There's sites where like I can, you know, pick the theme and push the button and it pops out. Right. It's like what really is different about you um what one time i was at a conference with i mean this is a really good conference and i was talking to a really skilled copywriter like this guy is no slouch and i said well what's your unique selling proposition as a copywriter and he's like uh like he didn't didn't really have an answer he goes well you know i'm really good at giving usps to my clients but i'm never it's like okay i understand cobbler's shoes but but you really have to have an answer to that question and it might be the very particular group of people that you do it for. It might not mm-hmm. be that it's so unusual, but but that you do it a, a a special way for a special group of people that you speak their language. It could be that you do it faster. It could be that you do it more thoroughly. It could be that you offer a two hundred percent money back guarantee. But I mean, it it really starts with that, and if you have that the ads almost write themselves. Um, And if you don't, you can beat your head against the wall all day long and you'll only come up with more mediocre ways to not really say anything. So Perry, what would you say? I mean, you already shared a couple of different things, some of the things to think about. So you said it's not only about like what we do in terms of services we provide or things like that, but it's really about digging deeper and I think that, and correct me if I'm wrong, but maybe when thinking about the USP could be that we start really digging deeper, 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 and we co- uh, we come up with different uh, points that we would like to touch upon. Yes. And maybe a risk is to kind of uh, go f- uh, at it for too long. And when somebody asks you what you do, you spend 10 minutes saying what you do. So do you yes. have any advice in terms of how to kind of, once we have dug deeper as you suggested and we come up with different points how to go about kind of uh, putting together this puzzle that we then call usp usps are very very expandable and contractible and in fact i'm just going to give you a word some people don't know this word but if you're around my world you need to know this word and the word is fractal so fractal is when you have a pattern and it's the same pattern under a microscope as you see in the telescope or anything in between, whether you know it's a magnifying glass. So a tree in your front yard, it's fractal because you can stand back 100 feet away and you can see the tree, but you can zoom into a branch and you can zoom into a, onto a twig, you can zoom into on a leaf, you can, you can get a, a magnifying glass and look to, at the veins in the leaf. You can, you can get a microscope and look at the, the veins inside the veins feeding the cells in the right. leaf. And you see branching, <laughs> branching, branching, branching. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's fractal. Okay. Or a river, the Mississippi River from satellite photo could be almost the exact same shape as a little tiny stream flowing through your yard when it's raining. Okay, mm-hmm. that's fractal. You, you get what I'm saying? Yes. Now, 
There's lots of things in marketing that are fractal. And when you understand this, it simplifies everything that you do. 80-20 is fractal. We we can come around to that. But USPs are fractal. So what that means is is your USP could be something you write on a 3 by 5 card and that you say to somebody in 10 seconds on an airplane. Or it could be a two-hour conversation on the airplane. It could be a set of 10 books that a doctor wrote about how to do a certain kind of surgery. And they're both, they're all of those things are, are the USP. So there's the super compressed version that's in three sentences or the super long version that's 30,000 words. D- does that make sense? Yeah. But the, as long as it is this what you uniquely do that nobody else does, it's still a USP. And so everybody actually needs whatever version is appropriate. So there's the three by five card. There's the landing page that's, you know, 300 words. Mm -hmm. There's the, you know, the, the 10 page sales letter and there's the 300 page book perhaps, um, like even a, even a a really good roofer. If, um, no, a roofer is probably not going to write a book, right? But if they do you really unique, um, approaches and methods, their, their approach to putting on a roof could be a 300 page book, even if it's never written down that way. See, you understand. And, 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 and somebody like some people want to know all that stuff, right? Or if you, if you're putting a roof on a, on a cathedral, uh, on a, you know, a, a thousand year old cathedral, um, there's some committee that's going to scrutinize everything that you ever want to do with that thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you have to, you have to have that, uh, in, in a scalable form so you can use what you need when you need it. I love what you just shared with us, Perry. Thank you. I I really like the concept because I think that, I mean, any touch, uh, it comes full circle with what you were saying a couple of minutes ago, because you said that, yeah, many people think that uh, USP is just a slogan. So when we think about a website, we may think, ah, yeah, I just add a sentence on the homepage and that that's it, does the the job. But as you said, we should think about uh, our, in this case, let's say our website and our USP from different distances. I, I like the, the analogy or metaphor of a tree so we can think about, yeah, what we do with a sentence on the homepage, but then we can think about at a deeper level with specific pages or specific elements that we have on, on the website or on a specific page. We can do that through the content we create. So I, I really like the, the idea of start thinking about the USP as something that we that we basically build that is something that we keep on building and that people can see from different angles, right? That's right. So there's a really tiny version that might go in a Google ad and you just kind of alluded to it. It's always under construction. Mm-hmm. I mean, yes, occasionally, you know, there is that rare product that, you know, you put it out there and it lasts for 20 years, you know, right. uh, tied laundry detergent probably <laughs> isn't really any different than it was 50 years ago, but that's very unusual. Most of the time, your USP is a constant work in progress. It's kind of like a website. Like, do you know anybody whose website is done? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? All well, right. your your USP isn't done. And, 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 and people don't really realize, look, if your USP isn't getting a little bit better every month and significantly better every year, then you're falling behind because that's just the high speed evolution of everything on the internet. It's very intentional. It's very competitive. And, um, and you only know it's going to work by listening to the marketplace. So, so it's always a process of listening, 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 listening. And, and combining elements, because as I was listening to, to you, Perry, so the example of the product that doesn't change in, in years or decades, I was thinking, yeah, actually, that's how many people think when it comes to especially a website that they may think, oh, okay, I think about 
the sales copy, I think about, I don't know, branding, I think about images, and they think about those elements as individual things. But from the conversation we're having, it sounds as if we should think about all those things together, because those contribute then to create what is our unique selling proposition. That's exactly right. Exactly right. Great. I'm really enjoying this conversation with you, Perry. And you touched upon the the 80-20 principle as as you were talking. Uh, and I said that you have uh, you are a, a multi best-selling author and one of your books is called 80-20 Sales and Marketing: The Definitive Guide to Working Less and Making More. Now, Perry, I know that the book and the the topic it covers in itself could be a topic for an entire episode or even a series of of podcast episodes here but if you were to condense it a little bit what would you say are some of the key concepts to think about and carry out if we want to leverage the 8020 principle which as you said is something that many people think they actually have nailed it when they haven't so number 1 um most people think they understand 8020 and they really don't. I thought I understood 8020. <laughs> I did. I was like I was like well like what what is there really to it? Like okay, 80% of your business comes from 20% of your customers. What's the big deal? Like and and it was interesting the first day I discovered it and I printed out a sales report and I saw, "Oh yeah. That's true." But but then I so here's what I didn't realize. I didn't realize that Number one, 80 20 is fractal, which means it means what fractal really means is there's a pattern inside a pattern inside a pattern inside a pattern. Hmm. So you look at the tree, there's one macro pattern or there's one intrinsic pattern, but there's literally a billion of them in the tree. Okay. Like when you get down to the cellular level, there's a billion little tree patterns all over the place. Right. Okay. And in 80-20, there, like there's millions of little 80-20s all over the place. So, so the traffic in your city, 80% of the cars, cars run on 20% of the roads, but there's an 80-20 inside of that, which means that 80% of the 80% of the cars run on 20% of the 20% of the roads. And 80% of the 80% of the 80% run on 20 of the 20 of the 20. So, <laughs> so that what that means, and it keeps, it keeps going until, until right. you're down to one road. So it, what that means is that 64% of the cars drive on 4% of the roads. It means 50% of the cars drive on 1% of the roads. And of course we know that's true, right? There's, you know, the, there's, there's the major expressways in Chicago or Los Angeles or Houston, and we all know what those are, and they get the vast majority of the traffic, right? And so mm -hmm. it's true. So so when when you when you suddenly realize there's an 80-20 inside and another one and another one, and the leverage every time you go to another 80-20, your leverage goes up four more times, four times more leverage, four times more output for given input. Okay. S secondly, secondly, 8020 isn't just a business rule of thumb. It's actually a universal law of nature. So it's not just business. It is the tree in the front yard. It is the roads in your town. It is the size of all the cities in the United States or the size of cities in Italy or Spain or Portugal, and it's the size of all the countries in the world, and it's the size of the files on your hard drive. It's everywhere. Um, it, it's the law of cause and effect. It's every minute of your day is 80-20 because 20% 20 of the minutes produce 80% of your results and 80% of the minutes produce 20%. Okay, and then finally, you can take any, like, you, I, you could blindfold me, put me in a marketing library, send me randomly to bra grab a book off the shelf, and I could open a page that from any marketing book that describes a good business strategy, and I could explain to you why 80-20 is the reason why they do that. <laughs> There's almost nothing 
in marketing that doesn't somehow come back to 80-20. So most people think 80-20 is an afterthought. It's actually the starting point of the whole entire thing. And that's that's what my book, 80-20 Sales and Marketing, is really about. And and when when people meet me or, or talk to me, they say, Perry, I read your book and they're everywhere. Oh my goodness. <laughs> there's 80-20s everywhere. I look out the window and there's 80-20 and I look down on the carpet and the carpet is 80-20 because 80% of the traffic goes on 20% of the carpet. And that and that little worn space in my living room where everybody walks, like that's 80-20. I'm like, yes, see, now you get it. And what that means, once once you get that, you can walk into any business, you can start finding 80-20s, and you either start eliminating stuff or amplifying stuff, eliminate stuff, amplify stuff, eliminate, amplify, and and you know, a few days, weeks, months later, you've got enormously more productivity for less effort than you thought was possible. And, and, and so it's really a beautiful thing. And it, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, uh, somebody mentioned, I, I did a, I did a live workshop in Nashville over the weekend and somebody said, Perry, you could study for this for the rest of your life. Couldn't you? And I said, yes, yes, you can. I, I said, you know what it's like, I said, I play drums. I said, how many of you have ever like grabbed a pair of drumsticks and sat down at a drum set and said, oh, drums, that's easy. You just hit stuff with sticks. Right. <laughs> well, if you've actually tried it, if you've actually tried to play, you know, be the engine room of a band, you know that hitting things with sticks is something you could spend the rest of your life getting good at. And of course, uh, if, if you like percussion, you know, you listen to great musicians who have spent their whole life just learning how to play the drums. And it, it's magnificent. 80-20 is really like that. And, uh, and if you get that, then you'll, you'll be infected uh, with the 80-20 bug. And, you know, your, your wife can blame me. <laughs> for your wife can blame Perry Marshall for the eighty twenty conspiracy, and right. I'll, I'll make sure to link. <laughs> I'll make sure to link to everything we are covering here, Perry. So the the book, your website, and everything else we're gonna talk about in the show notes. You said that the eighty twenty concept it's something that again is like fractal, and again there are different layers yes. to it. So. If this is maybe a bit of a of a tough question, but if somebody is is kind of wanting to apply that principle to their business, would you say to start from the kind of bird's eye view of what they do and then basically go from micro uh, yeah, sorry, go from macro to micro, or would it be better to focus on a specific aspect and then work their way up? So from Basically, the question is, would it be better to use a micro to macro approach or macro to micro? I think most people are going to find it easiest to start with something small and then just work from there. So, um, you, you know, one of the things that uh, oftentimes people get confused about is that they think they have to be all things to all people and they think they have to solve everybody's problems. Well, Right. Well, what 80-20 tells you is that um, 80% of why your customers love you is from only 20% of the problems you helped them solve. Okay. There's, there's a few reasons why your customers really go to you. There's not a thousand reasons. There's like three. <laughs> okay. Or maybe even one. And in, in, in fact, um, my friend Lynn Bertain, he he's got this thing called the five sixty seven rule, and it's just another version of eighty twenty. And it says, it says five percent of the features of a product are sixty seven percent of how people use it or what people use. So, like a stereo receiver could have a hundred buttons on it, and it's got all these menus and everything like that. But actually, you know, you use the FM presets and the volume control, and you don't really touch anything else. Okay. Right. <laughs> that's, that's the five. So like, do you really need all those features? Well, no, not You certainly don't use them all. Um, and, and, and so if, if you do one thing better than, 
uh, everybody else that's good enough. In fact, okay, you have to remind me, Master Chef. What's the guy's name? Uh, he has that TV is, show. Is it Gordon Ramsay? Gordon Ramsay. Okay, when he so you watch him on TV and he does these makeovers of restaurants, right? <laughs> and there, there's two things uh, besides all the politics and dealing with the family members and all this other stuff. Okay, basically his business strategy comes to just a couple of things. He'll go in there and he'll say, you have way too much stuff on the menu. Like get rid of two thirds of your menu. Okay. Because it, the dishes aren't really that great. And you got all this inventory in your freezer, uh, you know, and he'll go and he'll walk in the freezer and like, how long has it been since anybody touched that? How long is it? You know, <laughs> okay, get rid of that. Get it. Rid- and they, he starts getting rid of stuff. Okay. And then the, ne- the next thing he says is he says, all right, you need one signature dish that you are famous for in this town. If you you know, maybe it's your lasagna. Like you have the best lasagna in Dallas, Texas, which is possible. Okay. You know, there's thousands of restaurants in Dallas, Texas. Um, but if you have a little, maybe you're just a little Italian restaurant, but if you make an absolutely killer lasagna dish and you just get good at that one thing, people will drive from 10 or 20 miles away just to eat your lasagna. And it doesn't matter that you don't have the best dinner salad in the world, or you don't have the best lemon meringue pie in the world or the best Coke in the world. <laughs> but as long as you have that one thing, you can become famous for it. And and that now that's a micro, that's starting micro. See, what 8020 says is that a micro thing done really well can generate macro results. And, and so think of what happens when you're like, okay, chef, all you've got to do, I mean, Maybe it takes you a week. Maybe it takes you a month. Maybe it takes you to the next three months. All you have to do is perfect one lasagna dish and get rid of two-thirds of the other stuff on your menu. Well, how much time did you just save? Oh, we don't have to make that anymore. We don't have to make that anymore. We don't have to make that. We don't even have to know how to make it. We don't have to store the ingredients for it. We don't have to pay for it to our vendors at the end of the month. We don't have to have it in inventory. Our, our waitress doesn't have to remember it. Now, and see, this is the same everywhere. And, and um, you know, one of the things, and I am, like, believe me, I am as guilty of this as anybody, <laughs> is we get bored with what we're good at. Right. <laughs> and then we go do this other stuff. And then we do this other stuff. And pretty soon we don't even know who we are anymore. And our customers don't know who we are anymore. And we're not famous for anything. Like, so uh, we can all see how a chef would really get bored making lasagna, right? right? <laughs> okay. But, but we all, we all do that. So, so you, you've got to start with something. Yeah. I think it makes perfect sense. And thank you, Perry, for, for the example you made of, of the lasagna. Too bad you chose lasagna because actually it's my favorite dish. So <laughs> now, now I'm getting a bit hungry here. But I think the, the, the chef metaphor is a, is a perfect one. So if you're here with Perry and I, really take a moment to think about what he shared here and think about your business. If you already have a business, think about it and think of, of yourself as a chef. So try to think at at what is that one thing you want people to quote unquote come to your restaurant for? Ask yourself what is that thing and then focus on that. And uh, Perry, I know that uh, when it comes to driving people to our website or anyways, getting people's attention and things like that, there are many different ways we can go about it. There's many different platforms we can use and things like that. And as I said in the intro, you have done quite a lot of work in the digital marketing space and Google AdWords. You have a book, a bestseller, Ultimate Guide to Google AdWords, 
And I have to ask you if you could take a moment to kind of give us a Google AdWords 101. So maybe first and foremost, the question I should ask you related to that, Perry, is in case there is somebody here with you and I who has no idea what Google AdWords is and works, could you give us a for dummies definition? Google AdWords is Google's advertising system. And if you search for anything that you can buy, whether it's plumbing or rice cookers or anything else, um, you will see uh, when you type into Google that the top up to four listings say ad in small letters next to the listing. And that means the person actually paid to be there and they're bidding on the keyword and they're saying, I'll pay up to $1.50 a click for people to click on this link and come to my website. And so it's a bidding system. And uh, so, so some AdWords 101 is uh, first, you should go to isaw4me.com. I is I S A W F O R M E.com. And you should take a little quiz. Uh, and we built this little test, and it tells you um, based on some really simple questions, it would take you 60 seconds to answer the questions, it'll tell you how competitive your market is relative to other markets in Google AdWords. It will tell you how suitable what you do is for the search network, which is what I just described on Google search page. Mm -hmm. And it will also tell you um, uh, how suitable your business is for the display network, which is Google ads running on millions of websites all over the internet. Uh, in banner ads and text ads, New York Times and Wall Street Journal, all kinds of other places. And so you'll find, uh, so you'll get a score, you get three scores and I'll tell you, you know, and it, it'll give you an idea what you should advertise on. Now, now here, here's what you're going to find. What you're going to find is if you're a local advertiser, like if you're a dentist or a chiropractor or a flower shop or something like that. Google AdWords is moderately competitive. It's not ridiculously competitive mm -hmm. and it's doable. Now, if you're in a national market and you're selling something like diet pills or, or a customer relationship management software or breast augmentation surgery or some kind of thing like that, you will find it's very competitive and if you're going to do it, you better sharpen your pencil and you better get educated because Google has a lot of stupidity tax and they give no refunds. <laughs> Once you give money to Google, you will never get it back. Now, if you do AdWords right, it can be a money-making machine because it'll just bring you customers, bring you customers, bring you customers all day long, 24-7, 365 but you uh, again, if you're a national advertiser, uh, like all across the country in a competitive niche, um, you really need to go to school on Google AdWords or you will have your head handed to you. And really, even if you're a local marketer, you must get educated. You know, I have been in the Google AdWords education business now for almost 15 years, and I have seen more people get run over by a truck um, by underestimating. And I, I'm not trying to scare you, but you must do this in a proper way because here's the fact. 2% of the advertisers get 50% of the traffic. There's another 80-20 thing for you right there. 2% <laughs> of the advertisers get 50% of the traffic. So you really need to sharpen your pencil. Well, thank you, Perry, for the reality check. I think, you know, it, it's good that you didn't sugarcoat it. And you mentioned a link. I'll make sure to link to that in the show notes as well. And I know that, I mean, you have the book that can help. And you also have, I believe, a, a freebie on your site called Success with Google AdWords. Am I correct? Yes, yes. So you can go there and you can sign up. You can go to perrymarshall.com slash Google. You can get uh, you can get our ultimate guide to Google AdWords book at a special discount price, a little less than it costs on Amazon. And you get some extra things that don't come with the 
if you buy it somewhere else and you can score yourself. Um, I also want to go circle back to the 80-20 book. You, you can buy 80-20 sales and marketing for a penny plus shipping, which is $7 in the US and $14 international. And you'll get some extra videos and tutorials that you wouldn't get if you bought the book in the bookstore. And you'll be able to watch how we sell. You can really learn a lot. I am in one of the most competitive markets that exists on earth, which is internet marketing. Right. Uh, sometimes I wonder, like, whose idea was it for me to be in this kind of market? Like, <laughs> I mean, seriously, like, maybe I could sell, like, industrial presses or something easy, you know? Like, <laughs> Um, but, but anyway, that's the market I, I am. We have a very finely honed sales machine and I think I'm as good as anybody in developing trust and rapport with email. And if you study the emails that you get from me, you're really going to learn a lot. So you can get all that stuff just by buying the 80, 20 book for seven bucks plus shipping. Sorry, including shipping. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for, for that. I'll make sure to link to everything in the show notes. And you touched upon a very interesting point, Perry, because I think, you know, when we want to learn something, let's take you as an example. If we want to learn from you, whether it's through one of your books or a few of your books or through your website or one of the trainings you do or things like that, I think it's good to take a moment to not only to focus on the content itself, but also how the content is delivered, how it is presented, what happens before, what happens after. And that's how then we can we can learn and we can learn some things to apply to our own business. And I know Perry that perrymarshall.com is your online hub. I know you are on Twitter as well at Perry Marshall. If somebody would like to connect with you to say thank you or maybe ask you a question or anything like that. What would you say is the fastest way to do that? Is it through your email list, through Twitter, something else? Well, I don't I don't normally answer questions in public. I, I do that for my paid members. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, you know, we we have a forum for our Renaissance Club, for example, where uh, you know, it's a private members only forum. And if you're a member of that forum, then 24 hours a day, you can post a question and most questions will get answered within an hour or two by somebody. And we have a, a bunch of really smart people. And, and, I, and I just want to kind of um, make, make a point with that. There is a very powerful temptation to think that if you earn people's trust by giving them enough you know, free telephone sessions or answer their emails long enough and all this kind of stuff that they'll eventually go, wow, I really like this person. I think I'll start paying them for the advice. And it never works that way. Uh, what they will do is they will milk your brain for free and then they will go give to somebody. They will give their money to somebody who refuses to do that. Right. <laughs> that, that is what will happen. And so I don't do that and you shouldn't do that either. When, when, when you do free stuff, it should always be, be within a particular context um, that still values your time and keeps you from trying to give it away. Yeah, no, so, sounds good. So I'll make sure to link to your website and then I know there there are different ways people can learn more about what you do and and what you have to offer. And this, Perry, has been quite the informative and I have to say also entertaining conversation. So I want to say, first of all, thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you. It's great to be here. And uh, you, you asked some really great questions. And um, I just love how, you know, no two one of these interviews are actually the same. So <laughs> it's it's fun. Yeah, no, I, I it definitely means a lot coming from you. And the final question I have for you, Perry, to wrap up this conversation is, we talked about the USP. You told us about the 8020 principle. You gave us a quick dive or a quick dive into Google AdWords. And as I said early on, you've also written about Facebook advertising, for example. So the final question has to do with paid advertising. If somebody would like to test the waters with paid advertising, do you have any any in insight to share 
I mean, there are so many different ways one could go about it. Google AdWords, Facebook advertising, YouTube advertising, and this and that. So do you have any advice on how to get started with paid advertising? Yeah, I think for most people, Facebook is easier to start with. And uh, the nice thing about it is it lends itself very easily to these quick little pops where you have a result literally within a few hours. Mm -hmm. And, and, and actually the way Facebook works is it'll start out working really well and then it will fatigue over time. Like anything that you do because Facebook tends to be these finite audiences of people. Like if you have a certain number of fans, you can advertise to your fans and immediately you'll, you'll get, um, in engagement, but then if you keep buying the advertising, it'll keep dropping. Google is almost the opposite. Google is is very difficult to get started, but once it's working, it will usually work for a really long time. And so a good way to think about it is that you're going to work out the kind of pound the slag off your message and get your sales funnels working right on Facebook first. And then you'll move to Google because you'll find that if you're always trying to advertise on Facebook, uh, you can be very, 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 very busy feeding the machine incessantly with content that keeps wearing out, whereas it doesn't tend to wear out on Google. So that would be a, a good way to approach it. Love it. Thank you again, Perry, for your insight. So again, you'll find the links to everything Perry Marshall and I have talked about and have mentioned in the show notes page of this episode. Perry, thank you again. Jan, thank you for having me on Entrepreneur 360. is great. And we are back. That was quite an interview, huh? As you heard, there are several things to think about, several things To do, we talked about things at a macro level and at a micro level. And Terry mentioned a couple of things that can help you. He has some books, he has some free resources, and you can find the links to those as well as Perry's site and everything else we've covered in today's episode over at yanilunga.com for slash episode 218. In the next episode, next week, we're going to look at online courses. So you're going to be able to take some of the things Perry taught us today and apply them if you're interested in creating online courses or perhaps you're already in the creation phase of an online course. We'll be joined by Janelle Allen from zencourses.co. So if you're interested in online courses, in leveraging them as a business asset, then next week's episode is something you don't want to miss out. And how can you do that? How can you make sure you don't miss out on next week's episode as well as all the other coming episodes of the 36 Entrepreneur Podcast? Well, that's very simple. Just open your favorite podcasting app, the app you use to listen to podcasts, type in 360 entrepreneur hit subscribe and voila you'll be notified whenever a new episode is being published thank you for listening to the 360 entrepreneur podcast for more tips and tools head over to www.johnilunga.com